Congratulations, Mrs. Matthewson. The ball was extraordinary. Oh, thank you, Sims. I think it was, too. Oh, it's been a long day, Sims. Why don't you get some rest? And I won't be needing you anymore. Yes, ma'am. Good night. You're very naughty, you know. No question. Why did you disappear? To a most enchanting woman. I sincerely mean that. You know, my friends say that I have a very strong intuition about people. What do you intuit about me? That you flatter the women you meet. Excessively. As my late husband did also. I rather like it. And he too is outrageously good looking. You see. We were fated to meet this evening. Shakespeare. I beg your pardon? Shakespeare said, there's a divinity that shapes our ends, rough-hewn them how we may. Yes. Yes, I like that very much. Homicide. When did you last see her? A little after midnight. Madam's ball was a huge success. She requested champagne and said I could retire. Was anyone with her? All her guests had gone for the evening. She was alone.
Still spring and it's warming up fast. Could be a hot summer. It's not the weather, Papa. What's not the weather? I'm in a rut. I'm in a terrible rut. And I'm playing bored with spring break. Honestly, it seems our family's gone to pieces. Merely existing day to day. We eat, we sleep. We hardly have any real conversations anymore. I feel... I feel like it'll take a miracle to get me out of these doldrums. Here comes Mama. Maybe she's got a miracle. Charlie! <laughs> Charlie! What are you talking about? She's right here. Oh, Army! Your namesake! It's Uncle Charlie! He's coming home to visit. Harriet over the telegraph office telephoned me at the ladies' club to tell me that we had a telegram. Look, look, he's coming home Tuesday. He said that he's hurt his ankle and that he's coming home to rest and that he's homesick. Well, I should think so. It's been quite a while. Mama, you got a call from the telegraph office. Oh, I know. I can't believe it. What's all the excitement? What's going on? It's got to be mental telepathy. Mental what? It means that you have the same thought as somebody else hundreds of miles away. And I've been thinking of Uncle Charlie ever since I got up this morning. Thinking of how bored I was and how things could change overnight if only Uncle Charlie were here. And he heard me. Where are we going to put him? Oh, in my room. And I'll move in with Midge. Do I get any say in this? Oh, oh Mama. Uncle Charlie's coming home. Oh. Oh, he's coming up. <laughs> I'll get this one. Take this train right on up. Oh, come on. Oh, yes, I suppose. Check every car. You don't want to miss him, Papa. Charlie, believe me, we're not going to miss him. If he's on the train, he'll probably see us first. Oh, there he is. Uncle Charlie. Uncle Charlie. Uncle Charlie. Charlie! Oh, oh, my darling, little Charlie. Oh, did I hurt you? Hurt me? No, no, you couldn't hurt me. Not in a million years. Henry, look at you. Midge? And Bobby? Oh, I hate to say it, Henry, but they favor my sister. Good. Glad to hear it. Well, where is she anyway? Oh, she's home cooking up a fancy meal. A welcome home dinner, she says, just for you. Oh, I can hardly wait to see her. Well, the car's right over here. Come on. there like that, you look exactly like Emma Spencer of 46 Burnham Street. <laughs> the prettiest girl on the block. My baby brother. Imagine you thinking of 46 Burnham Street from so long ago. Oh, Emma, I always remember the old things. <laughs> Before the world changed. We must never forget the old things. I know it's not as big as what you're used to, but the bed is very comfortable. It looks wonderful. Everything looks wonderful. This is exactly what I needed. Someplace quiet, with people that I love. Uh, Guess it won't be long now before Charlie here gets herself married and moves out of this house forever. Oh, she hasn't fallen in love yet, far as I know. <laughs> I don't know. She's all wrapped up in this home. But the right man's going to be coming along one of these days. And it'll break my heart when he does. What do you have to say about that, Charlie? <laughs> I love what I have here, Mama and Papa and the children. And I just want things to get better and better. That's why I'm glad you're here, Uncle Charlie. Come on, Emma. Charlie, let the man unpack and settle in. <laughs> Oh, 
We'll be downstairs, Charles. Uh, uh, uh. Not on the bed. It's bad luck. prettiest dress I ever saw. I think so, too. Don't you remember? Remember what? You sent this dress to me, Uncle Charlie. I did. Charles, you're joking. <laughs> I did. <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> I'm forgetting a lot of things these days, which reminds me, I have some things here for Bobby oh. and for Midge. Me. something for you I picked up in Philadelphia. Oh. I thought you could put it to good use. And for my lovely sister. Oh, my. Oh, my, 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 isn't that a beauty? Well, who puts what I've been using to shame? Papa, let's put it on. All right. Oh, I, Charles, I can't let you do this. I... It is already done. Oh. And you deserve far more than some little fur. Oh, it's so beautiful. I dare not wear it to the ladies' club. What would they say? Who gives a damn what they say? Oh, Charles, your language. Charlie, would you like to have your gift now? I don't want anything. Um, I'll get dessert. She's a little shy. I mean it. I don't want anything. It's hard to explain, but... Well, you're here. And I haven't seen Mama this happy in months. It'd spoil things if you gave me something. Why, Charlie? Because we're not just an uncle and a niece. Mama said that when she named me after you, that we would be... We'd be soulmates? Here we are, Charlie. We certainly are. Well, I just... I just wish we could see each other more. <laughs> I try and imagine what it's like in New York, what you're doing, and going to all those important conferences and... Boring. Meeting fascinating people? Hardly ever. The fancy parties? Trust me, Charlie. Thoughts like those could only lead you to places you wish you'd never been. You keep things inside, don't you, Uncle Charlie? What do you mean? I mean things deep inside you that you want no one else to know. I'm like that too. And I have this feeling about you, Uncle Charlie, that there's something secret and wonderful. And someday I'll find it out. It's not good to know too much about someone, Charlie. <laughs> oh, but since we're like twins, I have to know. Twins? That's a thought. Give me your hand. for you. I want you to keep this. An emerald? A real emerald? It's the only kind worth having. It's dazzling. 
Oh, you have something engraved in it. No, I haven't, but I will if you'd like me to. Oh, but you have. Look, see, right here on the band. P.S. from R.M. I don't understand. You rooked me. Julie rooked me. Oh. Oh, it's all right. It doesn't No, matter. he rooked me. That's a lesson for you, Charlie. The whole world's crooked from top to bottom. Give it back to me. I'll have no, it taken off. If you want me to have it, I want it just the way it is. It's more personal that way because I can see that someone was very happy once with this ring. Breakfast! Oh, Emmy, coffee. I'm going to pamper you your first morning. And I bet you're the only man in this town having breakfast at 10.30. <laughs> Ooh, silk pajamas. I like them. This looks great. I hope the phone didn't disturb you. It started ringing with my friends from the ladies' club at 8 o'clock. <laughs> ladies' club? Why? Well, I happened to mention to Gladys Miller that you were here, and she spread it all around. <laughs> yes, but why would she? Charles, you're quite the celebrity. To us, anyway. A man of the world. And they want you to speak at our meeting next week. At your ladies' club meeting? Oh, I don't know. Emmy will have to think that one over. Well, as a matter of fact, you're not the only celebrity this morning. The whole family's going to be in the limelight. Limelight? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Some people are doing a survey, and it's going to be published in the Woman's Home Companion. What kind of survey? They want what they call the average American town and the average American family. And they just happen to have chosen you? Well, I told them we're not the average family, but... Charles, you haven't finished unpacking. Let me do it for you. Who are they exactly, Emmy? Well, they call themselves, um, the Institute of the American Family. Said their offices are back east somewhere in Washington, D.C. And they're coming here? To this house? Yes. This nice young man called, and he and his assistant... There were two of Mimi? Yeah. When? Um, they said Friday. Friday at 2 o'clock, and they want to interview everybody. They plan to come in here asking a lot of questions. You can count me out of it. Charles, you can tell them so much more than we can. And we're going to take pictures of everybody. Pictures? Hmm? Emmy, you amaze me. Why would you invite two strangers into your house to ask questions? I tell you, I want nothing to do with it. Good morning. I was just telling Uncle Charles about the survey. Morning, Uncle Charlie. Morning, Charlie. It's kind of exciting, huh? They want to take a picture of the whole family together. Oh, no, thank you. I have never been photographed in my life. I have one. In fact, I loved it so much, I took it from Mama. You sure you don't remember? I tell you, there are no photographs of me. Forty-six Burnham Street. It was Christmas. The year you got your bicycle. He was a terror on that bike. It's a wonder Mama didn't take it away from you, but no, she adored you. She smothered me. She protected you. If you'd listened to her, you'd never had your accident. But you didn't listen. No, he didn't listen to anybody. He went out on an icy road and he skidded right into that streetcar and Mama. fractured his skull and we didn't know if he was going to live or die. What is the use of looking backward? Today's the thing. That's my philosophy. Today. Right. Today. And, and, and today, you have to eat this great breakfast because Henry's going to be waiting for you at the bank if you don't want to be late. Mr. Granville, I'd like you to meet my brother-in-law, Charles Spencer. How do you do? Uh, you know young Charlie, of course. Delightful young lady. Always a pleasure. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Spencer? Oh, we all know what banks are, Mr. Granville. Looks okay to an outsider. But once you get inside and the doors are locked, no one knows what happens. 
Can't fool me, though. I'm a busy man, Mr. Spencer, and I don't care much for jokes about banks. It's no joke. Not to you, I bet. It's a joke to me. The whole world's a joke to me. This is a considerable amount of cash, Mr. Spencer. I got in the habit of carrying a lot of cash when I was traveling. Dangerous habit, Mr. Spencer. <laughs> Never lost a penny in my life. Guess heaven has a way of taking care of fools and scoundrels. <laughs> Plan to stay on here a while, perhaps. Perhaps. Great country. Great country. Now, Henry tells me you work on Wall Street. Yes, that's right. I do consultation work for a number of enterprises. And it's not difficult making money, Mr. Granville. It's a boring business, really. <laughs> oh, Fred, dear, we just stopped by to, uh... Oh, I'm sorry, dear, I, I thought you were alone. It's all right. I'd like you to meet Mr. Charles Spencer. He's Emma Newton's brother. How do you do? This is my wife, and this is Helen Potter. What are two charming ladies doing in a bank on a beautiful day like this? Oh, uh, we, we just will... <laughs> We're going shopping, and uh, I need it. Henry will be glad to cash it for you. Of course, Mrs. Potter. Thank you. Will you be staying here long, Mr. Spencer? I'm not certain as yet. Oh, are you going to the carnival? I loathe carnivals. So do I. <laughs> well, uh, how about dances? The Thomas Jefferson Club is having a ball next week. We're sponsoring a children's ward at the hospital, and the Newtons are coming, uh, uh, aren't you, Charlie? Mama wouldn't let us miss it. So, you see, you have to come too. <laughs> well, it sounds wonderful, Miss Potter. It's Mrs. Potter. Helen lost her husband two years ago. I wonder, could you do me a favor? Could you save a dance for me? <gasps> yes, <laughs> yes, of course. Good, then perhaps I will be staying longer than I thought. Well, sweet and sweet. Thanks, my wife. Ned, please. We can't hear ourselves think with that going on. Oh, but it's Stan Kenton. Yes, dear, but please play something softer. Charles? No. Henry? Oh, no, thanks, honey. You like mysteries, Charles? No, never read them. I'm hooked. My only vice. Gave up cigars two years ago. Yeah, why is that? Emma couldn't stand the smell. Mm, I'm sorry, Emma, I didn't know. Mm, Charles, you go right ahead. Henry brought home those cheap things. Smelt like Doniger's cow barn. <laughs> Here, Henry, is a nice cigar. Oh, okay. Have you thought any more about how long you plan to stay, Charles? My plans just aren't concrete at the moment, Henry. What's this about your plans? Your father asked me how long I plan to stay. With all the affection I feel here in this house, I'd be a fool to rush right off. Oh, that's lovely. I love waltzes. Too gushy. It's one of my favorites. The Blue Danube. Oh, I don't think so, Charles. No, it's a Merry Widow Waltz. <laughs> really, Emmy? You think so? I could swear that's the. Let me let me check the label here. Well, you're right. I should know better than to disagree with my sister. It is the Merry Widow. Oh, oh my, what can I have done here? It hit my cane. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, it's all right, Uncle Charlie. Let me get it. Charles, don't you think about it for a moment. We have plenty of records. Well, that settles it. I don't need this blasted cane anymore anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be Herbie. No one else knocks that way. Come on in. Door's already open. Guess what? Matt Jurgen got a TV set for his barbershop. So? 
just going to have it tuned in for the Queen Elizabeth coronation in case you want to see it. <laughs> what? So you got company. <laughs> Herb Hawkins. Glad to meet you, Mr. Hawkins. Glad to meet you. Charles Spencer. I've heard Emma talking about you. You may not know it, but she worships you. He knows it. She's not shy about telling him. Bobby, bedtime. Oh, good. Good. Did you finish that? I spotted the killer by chapter three. Now, don't tell me. I the just started it. in the wine routine. Herbie. Why don't these writers get something new? <laughs> Oh, and Charlie, let's do the dishes. Charles, if you don't want to hear about grisly murders, don't hang out with these two. <laughs> Have you heard what they're calling the guy who strangled those three widows back east? Uh-uh. Have you read your evening paper? No. The Merry Widow Murderer. Take this. If you gentlemen will excuse me. It's not just the widow part. It's because some fella was dancing with the last victim to the merry widow waltz when the murderer cut in. At least they're pretty sure he could be the murderer. Son of a gun. We were just playing that waltz on the phonograph. This one's the third victim. Rich lady. All of them rich ladies. They got an eye for money and the heart of the devil. But they never catch him. Some of these weird... I don't blame you. What's that, Mitch? Is that talking in there? Would it bother you if I read in here? No, no, not at all. Mitch, let me ask you, have you ever made a house out of newspaper? Mm -mm. Let me show you how you do it. First, you take the paper and fold it like this. Then you fold it again, like that, and one more. That. Then you cut out a little door. Then you fold it again. Just like that. And then you fold it one more time. And there, you have a house. Look, Charlie, that's Papa's paper. Hmm. Yes, I should have thought of that. Well, I'll tell you what, Midge. Help me fold it up again, he'll never know the difference. Midge, what in the world are you doing? Oh, it's my fault, Charlie. I was just playing a little game with Midge. Well, that's okay. We'll just put it back together again. Well, it seems our paper here gets bigger every year. Well, there's some pages missing here. Midge, did you take part of it away somewhere? Uncle Charlie's the only one who touched it. I don't see it here. Well, let's just hope Papa doesn't notice. Uncle Charlie, I'm sorry to bother you, but I left my slippers under the bed. Come in, Charlie. I wouldn't have disturbed you, but I saw that the light was on through the crack under the door. You're very observant. Uncle Charlie, I know something. I know a secret that you don't think I know. You know a secret? Remember how I said you could never hide anything away from me because I'd know? Well, now I know that there was something in the evening paper that you didn't want us to see. The evening paper? That's why you played the game with Midge. Because you didn't want us to know and you wanted to tear the paper. My dear Charlie. So now that I know, you have to tell me what it is. I have no idea what you're going on about. There. None of business. Charlie, you're hurting my arm. Sorry, Charlie. I didn't mean to grab you so hard. This newspaper is just some gossip about someone I once met up with. It's not very pretty. Nothing for you to read. Forget it. Charlie. Try. 
No matter what happens between you and me, we'll always be soulmates, you know that, don't you? that be? What's the matter, Mama? Well, there's two young men out there. They're getting something out of the trunk of their car. It's a camera. My goodness. I think it's those survey men. They said that they were going to take pictures. Well, they're not supposed to be here till tomorrow. Well, that's what they told me. I'm sure. I'm sure of it. Charlie, listen. Now, you, you go to the door. I'm going to be right there, okay? I, I will. Until tomorrow. Oh, really? Oh, gosh, I, I guess we got our dates mixed up or uh, something. <laughs> I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Would it be all right if we started today? I don't see why not. Hello, I'm Mrs. Emma Newton. Hi, I'm Rick Saunders. Rick. Gary Graham. It's a pleasure, ma'am. Gary, you said Friday at two. Nothing's ready. My husband's still at the bank. I'm really sorry about the mix-up. We'll just uh, take a few pictures first. Ask a few questions. Well, all right. But I wish you'd wait it until the house looked its best. I was about to put a cake in the oven and... You can go right ahead. Oh. Just do what you normally would at this time of day. What kind of cake? Maple. My brother's favorite. <laughs> Does your uh, family own the house? <laughs> I'm afraid it owns us. Papa's always having to fix up this or that. Mm -hmm. Six in the family, I understand. Oh, just five. My uncle's only visiting. I see. And this is the sitting room? Mm-hmm. Oh, just put down five, because we promised my uncle he wouldn't be bothered with any questions. Oh, but in a survey, we really need... I'm sorry, but <laughs> we promised him he wouldn't be bothered. Uh, the whole idea of a survey? Excuse me, but I don't think you're listening to me. Sorry. Forgive me. Sometimes I get uh, carried away with my work. That's all right. I guess that's what they pay you for, huh? Come on, Rick. Out of the kitchen. We're going upstairs. I really don't see why you want to take pictures of anything up here. It's just a bunch of bedrooms, that's all. Our job is to chronicle your whole life, not just aspects of it. What room is that? Oh, that's my room, but my Uncle Charlie's using it now. Could we see it? Uh, I don't think so. It's just that the room of an average American girl is important to our overall survey. <laughs> my Uncle Charlie's in there now. Is there a back stairway? Yeah, but I'm the only one who uses it. This is Midge and Bobby's room. Mm -hmm. Look, um... It's possible he's gone out. And couldn't we just knock and see? Huh? <laughs> I mean, we could really use some pictures of the room. Listen, why don't you knock, and if he's there, we'll just move on. Charlie? There. You see? Go ahead, Rick. Please don't touch anything. My uncle's very neat and sort of fussy. You know, I don't think we like being called average. Well, don't be offended. 
We could hardly use my family, for example. I have three brothers and three sisters. That puts us more than a few percentage points beyond the national average. <laughs> so were you the youngest or the oldest or the in-between? <laughs> the youngest. They still call me the baby in the family. Oh, I'm just the opposite. In fact, Midge and I are six years apart. Uh, Gary. Yeah. Gary, I think I'd like to get some shots of the hallway now. Uncle Charlie, they, they were just taking some pictures of my room, and since you weren't there, I didn't think that you'd... Mu my name is Gary Graham, and this is Rick. Gentlemen, I have to ask you for that roll of film, please. I thought I made it clear to my niece I didn't want my picture taken. Uh, look, I was just trying to get a shot of the hallway here. I don't think you were even in the picture. How could you let them go into my room, Charlie? I'm sorry, I... Give me the film, please. Give it to me! Rick, give it to him. Okay, but you're ruining a lot of good shots. Here you are. I think we oh. have enough photos for today. I'd like to thank you. Oh, uh, yes. You've been very helpful. I just hope that... Well, I hope we haven't caused any family squabble. A squabble? What do you mean? Oh, it's nothing, Mama. Nothing, really. Uh, will we see you again? Well, uh, I thought... I sort of poke around the town this evening, try and get a feeling for the place. I could use a guide. Would it be possible to borrow your daughter for a couple hours? Well, I guess that's up to her, isn't it? Would you mind? No, not at all. What the devil was that all about? Poking around town? What for? I want to question her some more. Ah, a nice little evening stroll, huh? Is it possible you have more on your mind than this investigation? The girl's obviously closer to him than anyone else. Besides, I, uh... Besides, you like her. <laughs> you know, if it were up to me, I'd just come right out and confront the guy. We can't. Not yet. We've got to know more. We've got to be certain. His niece can give us a few answers. You mean we're going to walk? Of course we do have one taxi, but he doesn't work on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> well, the town's so small you can walk just about anywhere. Except the women's club and the train depot. They're a little bit farther. That building right there, that's the bank where my papa works. Right next to it is the Chamber of Commerce. Um, around the corner is the feed store. Thank you. So that's our cover I'd say. Well... Except you have your own carnival. <laughs> it's not a permanent fixture. The Kiwanis Club brings it in every year. That's their building right around the corner. It has a wax floor where I, I fell when I was 10 and broke my arm. So did I. Charlie! Are you doing anything? Saturday night? Busy. Sorry. Mm -hmm. David Helms. Mm -hmm. He's really nice, but he's so boring. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you say? Oh, uh, I broke my arm when I was 10, my right arm. Mine too. No kidding? <laughs> Did you ever run away from home? Once. When I was nine. I was eleven. But I only went two blocks, and then I came running home because I got scared. I stayed overnight in a friend's chicken coop. I couldn't get the smell out for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful ring. Was it a gift? My Uncle Charlie gave it to me. It must be very expensive. I'd say your uncle hardly fits into the average category. Oh, he is the most unaverage person I know. You should have seen me before he came. I was in the doldrums. But somehow he makes me feel alive. You haven't seen him in a long time? Three years. And then you only stayed a couple of weeks. You like him very much, don't you? Oh, it's more than that. We're soulmates. 
Mama named me after Uncle Charlie. When I was a little girl, my uncle used to ride me on top of his shoulders down Main Street in the middle of the day. You haven't uh, told me what it is he does exactly. Works on Wall Street. Stocks, bonds, real estate. What company? He doesn't work for any particular company. He works for himself. Sounds to me like he's very successful. He is. Go on. Well, it seems like you're asking an awful lot of questions about Uncle Charlie and he doesn't even live here. Well, it's just the ring and we just happen to be talking about it. of the American family. Where is that located? It's in Washington, D.C. And, um, how did you get connected with it? My turn to answer questions, right? I just, uh, applied for it. You and your partner. You must have known each other a long time. Yes, quite a few years. That's all I wonder why then did you tell my mama that you two started working together only a few months ago? Well, uh, I'm, I'm sure he meant the working part. We knew each other before. I don't believe you. I beg your pardon? In fact, I'm getting this terrible feeling that I don't believe anything that you said. <laughs> Just a naive, small-town country bumpkin. That's what you see, right? No, not at all. You've been deceiving us all along. Why? <laughs> Wait! Charlie! Please, listen to me! Charlie! You wait for me? You're not making a survey! For some reason you want to get into our house! Uncle Charlie was right. We never should have trusted you. Will you stay away from us or I'll go to the police? If you'll just give me a chance. No more lies. No more lies, all right? My name is Gary Graham. I have three brothers and three sisters. I broke my arm when I was 10 and ran away at 11. And all the rest? We came here to continue an investigation. An investigation into the murder of a woman in Rhode Island. Charlie, I'm a detective. I'm with the Newport Police Department. What does this have to do with my Uncle Charlie? The fact is we have good reason to believe that the person we're looking for, the man who murdered Mrs. Mathewson, could be your uncle. Various pieces of information led us to a Charles Spencer in New York. We, uh, we found some of your letters there. And we traced him here. A lunatic. But you said yourself you didn't know much about him anymore. I know this. He is the kindest, dearest man in the world, and you could never convince me that he would hurt anybody. All right. But, Charlie, you can't say anything about this to anyone until we're sure one way or the other. Do you have any idea what this would do to my mother if she heard about it? Of course I won't say anything. And she must never hear of this. Never. You're gonna look very foolish, Mr. Graham. Spending all this time on the wrong man. Now, you take this merry widow fella. Ladies' man. Don't take any random profile to know that. You're missing the whole point. Hi, Charlie. Have a good time? <laughs> Didn't see my evening paper, did you? Can't find it anywhere. Man, can't 
can't even read his own newspaper in his own house. As well as I do, this library closes at 9 o'clock. If I make one exception, I'll have to make a thousand. Please, Miss Claiborne, there's something in yesterday's paper that I, I just have to see. It's very important. Please. I'm really surprised at you. This isn't like you at all. I won't be but a minute, I promise. It's very important. I don't know why you have to come rushing in here at night like a mad woman. You may have just three minutes. Thank you. in search for Mary Widow murderer, Newport, Rhode Island. An intensive search is now being carried out for the so-called Mary Widow murderer. The announcement of his arrest is expected daily, although police have no photo to identify, identify the subject. It is assumed to use his alias. His victims have all been wealthy widows. His latest victim was found at her palatial home in Newport, Mrs. Robert Matthewson, former music comedy star known to audiences as Teresa Schnelli. Teresa Schnelli. My girl, Charlie. For a moment there, I thought it was just going to be the three of us for dinner. Mm -hmm. Mention, Bobby. They've gone off with friends. Charlie, give me your place, please. please. Tell me you've been asleep all day, Charlie. She gets doldrums attacks. I suppose you could be worn out from showing that young man all around town last night. Such a nice young man. What'd you talk about? I told him how wonderful you were to all of us. And how I wanted to remember you as you were the first day you arrived. The first day? Well, dear, why the first day? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. No, I suppose it doesn't. In fact, I had a bad dream, Uncle Charlie, about you. A nightmare. You were on a train. And I had a feeling you were running away from something. Well, I certainly don't want to see Charles on trains again for a long time. There. As a matter of fact, I hope 
that he can stay forever. But he can't, Mama. We know that. He has to leave sometime. We have to realize that. We have to face the facts. Yes, I like people who face the facts. Well, not these kind of facts. Please, will you two stop this? Charles, one thing for certain. You have to talk to my ladies' club next Wednesday. I promised, promised. Emmy, what on earth would I speak about? Whatever you wish. To a room full of women? Certainly, of course. Women, women just like me. Now, would that be so difficult? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I don't suppose it is. Not in a small town like this. Cities are another matter. Cities are filled with women. Middle-aged women. Widowed. Their husbands dead. Their husbands who have spent their lives working and dying just so their wives would have money. Their silly wives. And what do these women do? These useless women. You see them in hotels and resorts, fancy restaurants, spending the money, eating the money, drinking the money, smelling of money. Proud of nothing except for their jewelry and their houses, these useless, fat, faded, greedy women. They're human beings. They're alive. Are they, Charlie? Charles, for heaven's sakes, don't you dare talk about women like that in front of my club. I, they tar and feather you. I, the very idea. Emmy, Emmy. Oh, I had you going, didn't I? <laughs> Charles, I could never tell when you're joking. <laughs> you might be interested in knowing that one of the ladies from my club asked about you. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mrs. Potter, she said she met you at the bank. I think you made quite a hit with her. <laughs> Charlie? Henry? I'll do it. Wrong, Charlie. What's the matter with you? What's going here? I'm hurting my arm again. No, you better tell me. I think you know something about me, don't you? That young man told you something about me. Charlie! Hi! I haven't seen you in here. What can I get you? Nothing. Nothing? Get her a ginger ale. Bring me a brandy. What did that boy tell you? What do he say to you? He has nothing to do with it. Look, Charlie, I know you're a very understanding girl. If you've heard some things about me, I would think that you would have enough perspective to ignore them. I mean, I've done some foolish things in my life. I chased around the world when I was 16 and I've made some foolish mistakes. <laughs> nothing dangerous, just foolish. Don't imagine things. How could you do those things? What do you know? There you go. Wow! What a beauty! Is this yours, Charlie? I wouldn't give for a ring like this. What did you give, Uncle Charlie? How did you get the ring? You think you know something. The clever little girl who thinks she knows something. There's so much you don't know, Charlie. What do you really know? You're an ordinary little girl living in an ordinary little town. You get up every day of your life knowing that nothing in the world is going to trouble you. You see, you've had a dream, a bad dream, a nightmare, that I brought you nightmares. 
You live in a dream, Charlie. Blind, a sleepwalker, knowing nothing of the world. Have you any idea just how foul it is out there? Do you know that when you rip the face off of houses, you'll find nothing there except stinking corruption? That it's a pigsty? That the world is a pigsty? Now surely those who help defile it should depart this world without regret? I mean, what possible difference could it make, Charlie? Use your wits. Learn something, Charlie. Learn, dear Charlie. If you don't, then in this life, you're certain to suffer the consequences. I will not be challenged. You understand me? I will not be challenged! <laughs> has to be an end sometime. A man can't go on running forever. Just give me a few days. Think about it, Charlie. If something happened to me here, it would kill your mother. You know that, don't you? Would you do that to her? No. You couldn't. You wouldn't. All I want now is to go off by myself. To be left alone. To think things over. I love you. I always have. Nothing can change that. blow on it, okay? You sit here and you rest a while. I have told your father a hundred times, time and time again, fix the stairway. I swear it's rotting out. Rotting? Absolutely. Sometimes I think the whole house is about to collapse. What do you think, Charlie? Think your parents deserve a new house? Oh, Charles. How about a new kitchen for you, Emmy? With everything to make life easier. Shh. I think you better tell Mama. Tell me what? That he's leaving. What? Leaving? 
Yes. Yes, it's true, Emmy. Though I've enjoyed myself here. Duty calls. Charles, you can't leave. What about my ladies' club Wednesday night that you're going to talk to? And Charles, what about the dance? What about the dance, Charles? I'm sorry. No. Remember the picture we took of your uncle? You gave him back the film? No. I saw you take the roll out of the camera and you... Yeah. No, we, we gave him another roll. Not the one with his picture. We sent that one back east in the hopes that a certain witness might be able to identify him. A witness? Yeah, a man who was with the last victim the night she was strangled said that someone cut in on them while they were dancing and he gave us a description of the man. We, uh, we should know in another day or two whether he can positively identify him from the photo or not. Maybe, maybe it's not your uncle. I, uh, I just wanted to say that, well, I, I had no idea when I came here that all this would cause such, such unhappiness. I'd give anything to have known you under other circumstances. Charlie, you may still be right. I hope you are. How was church? Still doing a big business? Busy turning people away? Did you make your reservation? Reservation? On the train. Ah, yes. Um, I plan to do that this afternoon. Shouldn't be much of a problem. Excuse me. The door was open. They got him, Henry. I just heard. Castro. What? A Cuban fellow, Castro. They arrested him, sent him off to prison. No, not Castro. I'm talking about the guy who killed all those widows. They cornered him in some shack in Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts, and tried to smoke him out. Son of a gun, if it didn't burn to the ground. Ashes. It's all in the world they got left of him. Herbie, I don't want to hear any more talk about murderers. If you want to do something really worthwhile, how about trying to talk Charles into staying with us for a while? He's leaving? Emmy. Emmy, don't go getting yourself all upset all over again. I don't know how much it means that I stay around for the dance and for the club meeting, and I certainly wouldn't run out at you before that. But you said... Yeah, well, I know. Circumstances change. Let's just see how it works out, shall we? Well, if you ask me, Henry, that Mary Widow fellow's death serves him right.
Bye, Mr. Graham. Suppose you've heard by now, it looks like they found their man. Apparently, the FBI had a profile on a man in New Jersey. They claim murdered the three women. The FBI can just come in and... They don't always cooperate with the police. I knew they had other leads, but... My department's ordered us back. I have to go. So Uncle Charlie's no longer a suspect? As far as the police are concerned, the case is closed. Charlie? Charlie, I left my gloves in the car. Would you get them and bring them in when you come? Yeah, Mama. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Miss Newton. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Good. Charlie, before I leave, uh, uh, there's something I want to say. You see, I, I just don't want it to end this way. I've only known you for a few days, and, and yet... Boy, I'm not doing this very well. Charlie... I like you very, very much. If I write you, perhaps, or call, I get a week's vacation in September. Would you mind if I came back to see you? I'd like that very much. Charlie, is everything all right? I mean, you seem so... Latch, it's always something shut. Now. What are you two locking yourselves in the garage for? I was saying goodbye. Really? In the garage? We were getting your sister's gloves and the door shut. <laughs> That's as good an excuse as I've ever heard. Can't say that I blame you, though. Charlie's a wonderful girl. I love her dearly. We, uh, might be seeing each other again. Oh? Yes. I might come back in September. Can I have a survey? Not exactly. Goodbye, Mr. Spencer. Goodbye. Don't worry about Charlie. Take real good care of her. I'm picking up my partner at the hotel and... Oh. Here's a couple of numbers where I can be reached. And my address. Charlie? Are you sure everything's all right? Well... Goodbye. Goodbye. I saved that dance. 
for you, Mr. Spencer. Isn't that kind of father? I think she likes him. No kidding. Now, whatever gave you that idea? <laughs> Foolish, Charlie. Think about it. What do you have? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So you don't like the initials on a ring and you tie it up with a newspaper clipping. But you don't even have the ring anymore, do you, Charlie? You have nothing. And the police are no longer even interested. I'm warning you, Uncle Charlie. Go away. Or I'll... Or you'll what? I'll do something. I will. all this evening. Henry, you look so handsome. I haven't seen you look like this in years. Well, you don't look so bad yourself. <laughs> Downright beautiful. Ooh. <laughs> what are you two lovebirds carrying on about? <laughs> Charlie was right. We were in the doldrums, and Charles, you brought us right out of it. You brought us some excitement. Good heavens, am I? I hope not. <laughs> oh, all right, the children can sit on our laps. And Charles, you sit up front with Henry, and Herb and I... Oh, nonsense, Emma. No reason to squeeze all in like that. You all go in the taxi. Charlie and I will go in the car. Why don't you go in the taxi, Uncle Charlie? Well, because I want to practice my speech with you, Charlie. You're my spiritual twin, my severest critic. I want your honest opinion. Well, I'm going to call Mr. Abercrombie and get us a taxi. Mama, mm -hmm. uh, please, please let me ride with you and, and Daddy can ride in the taxi. Charlie, why don't you go get the car? Oh, hello, Mr. Abercrombie. Hello, this is Emma Newton. About a little music while we wait. It'll calm my nerves. There's the key. Mama, I 
so? Yes, you do. There's a nip in the air tonight. Where's Charles? I think he's out in the kitchen. Mama! Turn the photograph off. I didn't turn it on. Uncle Charlie did. Yes, dear, but please. <laughs> turn it off anyway. The taxi's going to be here any minute. Emma, in case I haven't told you, you look absolutely ravishing this evening. <laughs> Help! Everybody! Smoke! The garage! There's somebody in there! Hurry! There's something wrong with the door! Don't cry. She's all right. She's gonna be all right. Go away. Charlie. Charlie, honey, it's Mommy. Sweetheart. Honey, call Doc Egan. No, Mama. No, Mama, I'm fine. Charlie, don't try to get up, please. Do as your Mommy says, honey. Just lie still for a while. You hear the salts? Here, take, take No, Mama, salt. really, I just need to get up. Oh, Charlie. Oh, honey. Oh, sweetheart. Someone must have left the engine running. I couldn't find the key. It was there when I went in. They usually come the front way, but I came the back tonight. You want something? I don't much feel like making any speech tonight after seeing what almost happened to you, Charlie. I guess maybe we better call this thing off tonight, do it some other time. No, no, no. Go ahead, all of you. Uh, I just need a minute, and I, I just need some air. I just need some air, Mama, and then I'll join you as soon as I can. No, I'm not going to leave you alone. Look, there's, there's the cab, Mama. Go on, please. I'll no. be right with you. Charlie, I won't. Emma, come on. I'm fine, Mama. She'll just need right. some air. Well, are you sure? I'll be right there, I promise. You're joining us, you promise. Let's get I promise, the cab. Mama. All right. be just fine. Good evening. Let me say first that I have a confession to make this evening. Although I have spent years in the financial circles of New York and Chicago, I am still a small town boy at heart. I look out at all of you here tonight and I say to myself, this is America. This is the real America. I am home. Hello, yes, I'm trying to reach Gary Graham. It's very important and he's not answering his home phone. Detective Graham, just a moment. I'm sorry, Detective Graham isn't in tonight. I see. He won't be in until tomorrow. Now it's been said that there isn't a man in the world who can live without women. <laughs> I've never quite believed that. Until I met the women of Petaluma. And so this evening, I would like to make a substantial donation toward establishing a children's wing at the hospital in hopes that many more donations will follow.
Thank you for letting me be a part of your wonderful community. May God bless you. I'll be right okay. there. Children, come on. Shoo, 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 shoo. Bed, 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 bed. Charlie? Yes, Mama? Darling, are you all right? I'm fine. Good. We were worried about you. All right, hurry down. We're so proud of your Uncle Charles. I'll be right there. Good. Champagne, Henry? Oh, my God, we hardly ever touch the stuff. Comes all the way from Paris, France. Thank you, Herb. Well, this is a very special occasion. Yes, it is. I'd like to make a toast to our distinguished visitor. We're proud to have him among us. Thank you. <laughs> if you don't mind, I would like to make a toast myself to someone who is very dear to all of us. <gasps> Charlie! Charlie, you're just in time. I was just about to make it. A farewell toast. You see, even though I hate the thought of it, I will be leaving in the morning. What? Yes, Emma, I'm sorry to have to break it to you this way. I would have told you earlier, except I didn't want to spoil your evening. It's a matter of urgent business. It can't be helped. I'll be making a reservation on the first train out. Just when everything was so perfect. <laughs> to you, Charlie. To my darling niece. My namesake, my soul mate. Can I look inside the train? Oh, better not, son. I don't want you on it when it pulls out. <laughs> Goodness sake, there's Helen. Well, she must have come down to say goodbye to you. Helen! Here now. Yes, what? I'm leaving, too. <laughs> leaving? Yes, I, I've been wanting to visit my sister, Linda, for months now, so I, I thought this is as good a time as any. Didn't Charles mention it to you? Ah, uh, no. I told him last night before I left you. It slipped my mind. Oh, Helen. <laughs> See you on board. Bye. I guess I better get on board too, Emma. Right here. Board. Well, Charles, you write to me now. Oh, I will. Don't you forget. Thanks for everything, Henry. Take good care of Charlie. My kids. Charlie! I'll be thinking of you.
Oh, I bet you don't say it. No, that's the system. Oh, Mrs. Potter, thank goodness I found you. Something wrong? Something's very wrong. You have to leave this train. We have to leave right now together. Whatever for? You're in danger. And, and we have to get off the train. I'm afraid I don't understand. No, please, just leave the train. Just, there's, I'll, I'll talk to you about it later. Uh, my, my dear, I... There's no time to explain it now, Mrs. Potter. You've got to go. Charlie. Charlie. I don't know what's brought on this um, hysteria, but unless you can give me a very good reason, I have no... Your life is in danger. Can't you understand, Mrs. Potter? Why aren't you I'm listening surprised. to me? What has got... Why aren't you listening to me? You have to leave. All aboard! You have to get off. Whatever you're talking about, it's too late now. The train is going to move. You get off. Get off yourself. Does you plan to go with us? Dear Charlie, here I thought we already said goodbye. Let me go! No, 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 no. Not ever. It was a fine thing you did for your mother, though, not telling her. Would have crushed her completely. What a shame now, it's wasted. <laughs> How do we ever replace someone like this? Someone so, so full of life, who forged a very special place in the hearts of everyone in this town. A cheerful smile, a kind word. Always one to think of others. Always one to listen attentively and to care. Benevolent, charitable, and above all, compassionate. We stand here now in your presence and we ask your mercy and your love. We shall not mourn in that respect. The heavens tell the glory of God and the vault of heaven reveals his handiwork. Let us grieve for Are you those going to tell them? who will miss him so much. His sister Emma, no. her husband Henry, and their children. Ever? For they not only loved him, but their love is an enduring one that knows no passage of time. Charles Winthrop Spencer will always be in their hearts. Never. He was part of a family that settled here many years ago. And even though his work took him to far off places, he was never far in his own heart from this town which nourished him and gave him inspiration. And so we say Godspeed and farewell. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. God bless you all.